sizzling summer webinar. We are excited to be with you today, be back with you. Of course, it has been a minute because we were off for the 4th of July holiday, but as you know, you were taking advantage of the business plan that we did on Thursday. Hopefully you had a chance to go and grab that and either you or your team or your brokerage is operating from that plan. I know that we are well underway in working with our clients, Kate, in working with our coaches to make sure that that plan is being executed as not only is it important to update your business plan regularly, but now that things are changing in the market, it's probably more important than ever to have a new plan. And this is your opportunity to wipe the slate clean and start fresh uh, this month for the last half of the year. So if you haven't had a chance to go get your, plan, your hands on our second half business plan, go to Glover U's website, it's under the free resources, the videos there from last week, Thursday, go grab that, share that with your team, share that with your assistant, share it with your brokerage, do whatever you got to do to make sure you start operating from that plan. Today, we're talking about time management for working parents. And as we take a look at our webinar topics, we look at a couple things. Uh, we look at what are the needs of the industry right now? We look at what are the needs of the market, meaning how has the market affected what's going on in the industry? We look at what are the needs of our clients? What are the things that our clients are asking us? What are the things that agents in our brokerages uh, are asking us for help with? And this is one that, of, of course, we talk about in our system. You know, We talk about time management and putting together a strong morning routine and own the morning and win the day. And, and you've heard all of those things. And we only lightly touch on, well, what if I'm a single parent? Uh, what does my schedule look like? What if I'm a, a, a single mom? What if I'm, you know, uh, what if I have a newborn and, and a three-year-old? How, how do I handle my schedule now? Of course, through the years, we've given you some ideas and some things to consider, but we've never actually had a full-blown webinar as it relates to that. And so we're excited today to jump in with Kate Simon, the head coach of Glover U. She has heard it all. She has seen it all. She's been in our business from, since the start, basically since college. Uh, understanding the way the Jeff Glover sales system works, as well as working with some of our most high, our highest producing clients and brokers across North America. So Kate, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much, Jeff. So I'm really excited to talk about this topic today. Um, just to set the record straight, I am not a single parent. I am a parent. Um, I have a 15 month old daughter at home and then one on the way. And this whole concept of time blocking and planning for busy parents it's, it was all something that I could say in theory and help give people uh, tips and tools for um, like in theory until I had children. Um, and it wasn't really until I was thrown into parenthood uh, with a baby, um, trying to balance maternity leave, coming back to a large event that I really sort of understood holy crap, we have a lot of things to navigate on the, on the, on the forefront here. And it, you know, I want to sort of say that I'm not perfect at all. I don't have 100% of this figured out, but um, I've been forced over the last 15 months to make systems for myself. And of course, now welcoming another baby in November, I will probably have to rebuild that again. And so um, the, the good news there is I now have a deeper understanding for all of our clients who have children, um, who might have young children, old children, but specifically a deeper understanding for people who have uh, priorities, maybe outside of just selling 100 houses a year. And, and don't get me wrong, there's no shame in having large business goals yet. Um, you know, as my life has completely shifted and as I'm sure a lot of parents out there can relate, um, there's truly nothing more important to me than my family, especially in this chapter. So this is a, a passionate topic for me to talk about right now because it helps keep both in line. Right. And when, um, when I had my daughter, I was sort of forced um, down this pathway of absolutely loving my career and being in a position that required a lot of me, not just showing up to work every day, but the people in our world, but also a family that, you know, desperately needed me too. And so um, the the thing I wrote down first was- we hey, Hold on a second, because we got some other things to get to, Kate. Oh. We've got some resources to give away, you know, all the- Oh, sure, stuff, sure. Do you know? your thing. You do right. your thing. So of course she loves when I cuts her off, when I cut her off. But also I do want to add to this, Kate, um, you know, you have been in the real estate industry, essentially your entire adult life. Mm -hmm. And you have worked with some of our best clients, many of which who are working parents. And so yeah. while I appreciate you, you sharing not, you know, now I know, now I get it because I'm in your shoes. You also have had a lot of experience through the years oh, totally. in helping agents become productive 
with kids at home. And so, you know, I don't want to take away from, you know, some people say, okay, a 15 month old. So you got 15 months experience, no, right, you, got, right. you know, a <laughs> right. decade of experience and working with others who have, who are working parents, and sure, right. you know, some of their best practices and work, what worked for them. And you've helped, you know, families work through being productive and also managing the household. And so, right. you know, let's not take away from that experience that you have. So first things first, I want to make sure everyone's got the workbook that was sent out to you. It was emailed to you. Uh, they're going to drop that in the chat if they haven't already yet. Go ahead and get this printed out because there's definitely some things in here that we need to cover. So check your email for the workbook and also check the chat link. They'll be dropping that in the chat for you to go ahead and print off. Please make sure you print it off because you're going to need it at a few points today. Also, as we do each and every webinar, I want to know our first timers. Where are our first timers coming from? Go ahead and drop your city and state down in the chat, please. And when you're doing so, make sure you add all uh, everyone. Right now, it's probably set to just panelists for us to see, but I want to see where everyone is coming from today. So go ahead and drop your city and state down in the chat there. Tampa, Florida. Awesome. Let's keep them going. Also, Albuquerque, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Maryland. Love it, love it, love it. Let's see. Anybody in Canada? Where's all our Canada friends at? Ohio in the house. OHIO. I know. I love it. All right. Cool, cool. Well, thank you for joining us. I know every single time we do one of these sessions, Kate, we still have like 20% of the audience is brand new first time on. So it's cool to see and, and welcome our first timers. And we see those all coming in on the chat. So thank you for joining us. Harrison Township in the house. All right, cool. So do me a favor. If you've got your workbook in front of you, turn to page three in your workbook. I want to share with you, this is especially for our first timers. Uh, again, if you've been on these before, just bear with me for three minutes while I give away some free resources to our first timers. And I'm not going to go through every single one on here, but I am going to go through the most important ones. And first things first is I want everyone to circle, star, underline, highlight, live on real podcast, the live on real podcast. We talk all the time about what you put in your mind and what you put in your brain will determine how successful you are in the business. What you put in here comes out here. What you put in here comes out through your legs and your phone calls and your actions and what you say. And so podcasts are one of the best things that you can spend time listening to, to make sure you're always pouring positive thoughts, good ideas, good strategies into your mind. And that's one area where I would say when people ask Jeff, hey, how do you keep such a strong mindset in a shifting market? My recommendation every time, listen to podcasts. You have five days a week probably that you're going to drive to the office or show up to work, pick your favorite Monday podcast, pick your favorite Tuesday podcast, and so on. We drop a new podcast every Thursday, and it's anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes, real real estate-related information based on what's going on right now. Sometimes it's a conversation that Kate and I will have. Other times it's an interview uh, of a panel on one of our at one of our events or a keynote from one of our uh, CEO speakers at our events. So take advantage of the Live Unreal podcast. It's absolutely free, and I encourage you to do so. The other thing I want to make sure that you have access to is our daily text message. So every day, Monday through Friday, by the way, if you're a current subscriber to our daily text message, just go ahead and drop a hand emoji in the chat. Go ahead and throw something down there in the chat if you're getting those daily messages. Right now, we're talking about what's happening in the market. You know, just throw your hand up. Okay, yep, you can raise your hands too. That works too. Go ahead and drop in the chat if you're receiving the daily text message or just say yes with the exclamation point. I want to see who's receiving those. Yep, yep, awesome, awesome. Awesome. Okay, good. So you're getting them. That's good. Every day, Monday through Friday, I write a message that specifically relates to what's happening in the business right now. Sometimes it's inspirational. Sometimes it's knowledgeable. Sometimes it's just, hey, I went on an appointment last night. Here's what they asked me. Here's what I responded. Go try it. Right now, we're doing a series talking specifically about what's happening in the market and what's going on with, with, with the shift in, in, in more listings coming on and, and things you know sitting stale and so forth. Anyways, if you want to subscribe to that, it's totally free and easy to do. Just take out your cell phones. Go ahead and grab them. I'll show you how to do it right now. And open up your text messages. Just as if you met me or Kate for the first time at a restaurant and said, hey, we got to exchange contact info. Here's what you do. Go to your text messages. I'll give you a second to do so. And then put in the phone number. It's five digits. It's 55444. 55444 is the phone number. And text the word morning to 55444, morning, M-O-R-N-I-N-G. That's how you sign up. When you know, you know it's working because in about 30 seconds, it's gonna ask you your first and last name, give your first and last name and you're all set. There's no spam there. You know, if you don't like some of the messages, you can reply stop at any time. 
All right, text the word morning to 55444. Last but not least, while you have your cell phone in your hand, go ahead and open up your Facebook app. I'll give you a second to do so. Go ahead and open up your Facebook app and type in the, go ahead and start typing Glover space, the letter U. Thank you. How could I forget this on your? I know, I don't know. You know, I always have it here ready. Type in Glover U inner circle, G-L-O-V-E-R space, the letter U space inner circle. Now that's a free Facebook group, which we share all sorts of stuff in there. You know, when we're coming to town, people looking for role play accountability partners, but also if you'd like to subscribe to our publication, that's how you're going to get it through the Glover U inner circle. And it just so happens to, what do you think? Not bad. Just so happens <laughs> to feature Kate this month on the cover. And again, it's going to ask you, where do you want us to send that? That's a physical, it's a physical magazine, 80, 90 pages of real, real relevant real estate information. Don't put your email address in there because it's physical. We're going to mail it to you. So drop your mailing address in there. We'll drop this in the mail to you. Every time we produce one, we'll pay for the printing. We'll pay for the postage. It's all yours. Again, that's the Glover U Inner Circle Facebook group. And that's how you get your hands on this. Now, for those of you that have been in the Inner Circle and you're like, how do I get my hands on this magazine? I'm already in the Inner Circle. Super simple. Just go to GloverU.com forward slash Gazette. GloverU.com forward slash Gazette. And that's how you get your hands on this if you're already in the inner circle. All right, let's shift gears. Before we jump to today's topic, for those of you that are newcomers, if you're not familiar, Glover U is a, we jokingly say, non-denominational coaching and training organization. And that's because we have agents from all companies, Independence, Cobalt Baker, Remax, Century 21, Keller Williams, EXP Real, you name a brokerage, there's somebody that's a client of ours in one of those brokerages. And we are based, of course, here in Detroit, Michigan. I've been listing and selling real estate now for 20 years. And Kate's been with me for, it seems like, almost all 20 of those. Of course, I think it's probably been more like 14 years, yeah, 15, 14, 15 years or so. And we're sharing we're not what we did yesterday, not what we did last week, not what I read in a Facebook group somewhere. We're sharing what's happening now. Why? Because we're on the ground with you. I'm personally selling between 75 and 100 homes per year. Our team just on the other side of this camera, on the other side of that wall, is selling between 900 and 1,000 homes per year. And so if you're wondering, why should I pay attention to what you guys have to say? It's because we're in it. We're with you. We're on the ground with you. We know what you're going through. We know what you're experiencing. And today's talk is a perfect example of that. So let's shift gears. Kate? Wow. We're talking family, business, managing time as it relates to how do we stay productive with an active family. So let's chat. What do you hear? What's, what's going on? So of course, and I'm sure you get this too on your, on your uh, tour stops, uh, inevitably at some point or another, Jeff Glover has shared his personal schedule that he's used mm -hmm. for years in the business. And I'm sure you guys can reach out. We've, we have it written down somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty rigorous schedule. And we would always get the question, how does this work if you're a parent? Mm -hmm. Oh, but you don't have kids. Oh, but you don't have these other additional responsibilities. Mm -hmm. and, and while that's valid and true, the challenge with that is when there's a qualifier around how and why someone succeeds, it removes the opportunity for somebody who doesn't have the same circumstances, right? And so, sure, we could say that Jeff, you know, might not have young kids at home, might not have the same family priorities, yet it is still possible to achieve at high level, to hit your goals, to work an efficient schedule with those things as well. And so, what I put together today is, is really straight off of how I run my day, my schedule. And again, Jeff, um, the tips, tools, and techniques that, you know, I've used with a lot of my top agents that I coach, um, who are also parents. So the first couple of things I wrote down are, um, there's going to be a couple skills we're going to go over and then ultimately putting them all together, right? Because running your day, uh, with numerous demands coming at you from different directions, it's actually a skill. Uh, it's actually a balancing act. And, um, what I first wrote down here was we all have the same 24 hours in a day. And I wrote that down because I, I, that was something that I naively used to say, um, pre kids, right. Pre, pre this, this, you know, life outside of work. And that is like a saying that makes me cringe. Now we all have the same 24 hours in a day. Now, the reality is we do, we all do have the same 24 hours in a day, but we don't have the same priorities pulling at us within those same 24 hours, which means that we have decisions to make. We have decisions to make about 
what on our task list is most important? What can we let fall to the wayside for another day? What do we need to buy time on? What do we need leverage on? And ultimately, how do we get the most out of the time we have while we have a fully functioning, fully running life outside of the hours of eight to five, eight to six, eight to seven, whatever your working hours are. So there's, a, there's the first skill here that I wanna make sure that we talk about because we're gonna go back to this a lot and this is really important that we all start uh, wrapping our mind around. And that skill is the difference between priority management and time management. Okay, so skill number one is learning the difference between priority management and time management. So again, when we're talking about time blocking, we're talking about what tasks are most important and how do we plug them into certain time slots. Okay. As a working parent, as a potential single parent, single mom, wh whatever category you might fall into, it's very possible that on any given day, you might have 10 different time slots, but 15 different priorities. So how do you pick and choose what's most important to get to in a given day? That's ultimately going to help the bigger picture of moving your business forward. So we're going to go over that. And what I wrote down is this. So the definition of time management, so write this down. Time management is completing a task within the given time frame, aka meaning being good at managing completing a task, giving completing a task given the period of time to complete it. Okay? So let's say you have 2 hours and you need to input a listing and then call to schedule, you know, photos. Okay, great. You have 2 hours, you can complete two tasks within those 2 hours. Okay? Priority management. Uh, is the second thing I wrote down. So go ahead and write down priority management. And that is completing the right task within the given time frame, AKA efficiency, right? So what that comes down to is you only have two hours, but you have five tasks to plug in. How do you look at that list of five tasks and know what absolutely needs to get done first and, and what can potentially fall to the wayside? And then how do we get more efficient within those tasks to fit them all into two hours rather than the five hours? So what I wrote down here is this, it's, you know, it's not uncommon that as a working parent, as a working mom, you might have days where your schedule is abbreviated. You might have days where you have to pick your child up, you know, early from school, from daycare, whatever the case may be. And now your eight hour day is, you know, abbreviated down to six hours. Okay. Well, how do you pick and choose what are going to be the most important activities to get done in those six hours that are going to keep your business moving forward? So, um, you're going to see, uh, a lot of stuff going on behind me. I know that the camera can't see all of that. That's okay. I'll explain to you guys what's really on that whiteboard, um, how I use it and how you guys can ultimately take a, a, a to-do list and put it into quadrants as well, which is exactly how I run my day. But that's going to be where we learn that skill. Uh, but before we really do anything else here, before we talk about what's an ideal morning schedule for a working parent, you know, how do we make the Jeff Glover schedule work for you know somebody who has kids at home? We first need to understand what our priorities are outside of the business, outside of the office, okay? And one of my favorite sayings with this is we need to decide for all the balls that we're juggling, which ones are rubber, which ones are glass. When a ball hits the ground, which one's going to bounce and which one is, is going to shatter, right? And for each of us, that might be slightly different, um, but because we're talking to working parents right now, I'm assuming that the glass balls are typically going to be family mm -hmm. and whatever yes. commitments we have around our family. So I wrote down a couple points on knowing and determining your priorities. Okay. So what I wrote down is this, we have to first and foremost, know our core values. Now here's the key here. Only you can determine what your core values are, right? So back at the summit, I actually did a breakout session on a core value activity for any of you who are registered. If you want a copy of that, it's, it's like a whole worksheet where you can go through. It's an activity where you really do identify your top five core values. You define what success in each core value looks like in this season of your life. And then you build a schedule around that, right? So um, number one is knowing your core values and only you can determine this. So right now you guys might be thinking, well, Kate, if my core values are personal and only I can determine this, how do I measure myself against somebody else? You don't, right? And so here's the key here is we need to get comfortable with our definition of success looking entirely different than somebody else's. Yet, it still has to be totally and completely aligned with you, your family, and what you guys agree is a priority. Um, number two, this is a question I ask every single one of my clients, and that is, what is your definition of success right now? In fact, we heard this 
at the Live to Lead event that we went to in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And her name's Valerie Burton. She asked the question, what does success look like to you in this season of your life? So I'll ask each and every one of you that, right? And this might be something that you, you know, you go back to, but what does success look like for you in this season of your life? And I actually encourage our clients to go through each category. What does success look like for you in regards to health in this season of your life? What does success look like for you in regards to finance in this season of your life? What does success look like to you in regards to parenting you know, relationships, social life, fill in the blank and answer that question. Because as your life evolves and as you have children, as you have these different demands, that definition of success, not only will it change, but quite frankly, it should change. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you're clear on what measuring stick you're using to define success right now. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfect sense. Okay. Uh, next, when it, when it comes to determining know, curiosity in your experience, Obviously, you've worked with a lot of top producers. How long did those seasons like typically last? Just from a broker asking for me? <laughs> from a broker standpoint, I'm trying to plan here. Uh, how long do those no, seriously, what what do you I mean, is it is it a wide range or is it like you can say generally three to five years, two to you know, is it it's well, it's so different, right? Because I've got um a client right now, she's a great client in, in Baltimore, and yeah. her her kids are in their 20s. Mm -hmm. And so one of the tasks that we were working around was her hosting an engagement party for her daughter. I think, I think it was her daughter, mm -hmm. like at their house. Yeah. And so while she might not have the same demands of childcare, daycare, she still was actively involved in being the cornerstone of her family mm -hmm. and hosting mm -hmm. this event. Now, what I can say is depending on the season of where your kids are in their life, um, it's going to require more time or less time. In fact, I have a really good friend. She's got um, a 13 year old and an eight year old. And, you know, we, we text every day here and there. Every single time I text her, she's taken one to gymnastics, one to soccer, yeah. one over here. And it's Traveling. like, holy crap. Yeah. Like it, truthfully, it only gets harder. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and you'll, you'll it's build in leverage, you'll build in support and you'll build in a community mm -hmm. that can help you with that. But what it ultimately comes down to Jeff is answering the question of how involved do they want to be? Mm -hmm. and, and there's no judgment there. If they're like, Hey, this is my career. Dad's doing all the pickups and drop-offs or mom's doing all the pickups and drop-offs yet. <laughs> uh, the kids only get more involved. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's really going to come down to depending on their family priorities, um, how that pulls them. Okay. Cool. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the last thing I wrote down here about priorities is, and, and this is kind of a funny one to say, because it sounds, it's really in the, in the uh, light of like scarcity, but it's, it's hard to not look at things this way is I always do the regret test. Okay. And, and this has been a challenging one for me because prior to having uh, my daughter, like I, if, for those of you who have been around a while, you know how passionate I am about Glover U, you know how passionate I am about my career. And I unfortunately have had to pick and choose what I say yes to and what I say no to. And it, and it pains me, you know, for the opportunities that I've either had to say no to, or had to say not right now to, yet I had to ask myself, which regret can I live with the most? Can I live with saying no to this right now, hoping that there's more opportunity when I get through this chapter, or do I have to live with the regret of missing out on X, Y, and Z with my child? And, and, and that's, that is a very real reality that we as moms and dads have to make is which regret can I live with? Because there's always going to be something pulling your attention. So when it comes to determining your priorities, um, I'm using my core values first and foremost, I'm building around those. And then number two, I'm asking myself if I have to pick one or the other, which regret can I live with? Which regret do I not want to have? Does that kind of make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. So before we get into the actual time blocking activity, we have to understand priorities and planning for the time blocking activities. And so this is where, when we talk about building like the second half of your business plan, um, this is actually something Neil Schwartz uh, taught me in California. He was a good mentor of mine in California. Mm -hmm. And it's, if, if family is a top priority, when we're looking at building our schedule for an annual basis, quarterly basis, second half of the year, doesn't matter. <laughs> We actually have to put the family stuff in first. Okay. So at this point, I mean, for, for Andrew and I, my husband, you know, we were sending our daughter to a school in the fall. I already plugged in every single date in the calendar where she either has a half day, where she's off, where we have school breaks. And I either have coverage for it, or I have a plan on who's going to be home, who's taking care of that. So there's certainly going to be planned days off or planned um, disturbances in your schedule. So those have to go in first. 
Um, number two, you have to then put in your family time, your family vacations, right? Um, so whether it's a soccer tournament, you know, across the country, or whether it's spring break in February or March, chances are, especially with with a family with kids, you have heads up on when those things are going to come up. So block them off in your calendar. Now, I'm not saying that you have to plan a trip right now or know whether or not you want to take advantage of that. But in a 52 week calendar year, Neil Schwartz actually had us block off holidays, block off family time, mm -hmm. block off sick time for kids, which we'll get to in a second. And it came down to, we had about 42 to 45 working weeks a year. Mm -hmm. So now our business plan is not actually 52 weeks. It's like 45 weeks. Mm -hmm. So now we're fitting our goals into those weeks. Now, the good news is you could have a bonus of time and not use that time off that you've put there. But what I want to make sure is there is that we have um, a buffer because what typically happens is if you get thrown off where, oh my gosh, I'm home with the kids sick today, we have a tendency to like throw everything out. I call it the, I already had a cookie effect, right? So when you're on a diet, right? And you have a cookie and you're like, oh, well, the day is shot. So I might as well have Taco Bell <laughs> yeah. pizza and everything yes. else, right? Yes. I love it. Do you like, can you relate? Can you, can anyone relate to that? Just me right now. So, um, but, but it's important that we actually build in that flex time in our calendar where we can mentally say, no, I'm actually still on track for my goals because I planned for this upset to come in my schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that first thing was, was take a look at the calendar, put in like the time off from school, daycare, childcare first. What would you say to someone that is not like you you tend to be a more detail oriented. You tend to be more of a planner. What if you're not necessarily wired to be a planner? Like, is there a happy medium there? Or what is your response to that? I'm sure you've had clients give you a hard time on that. Like, Kate, really? You want me to plan for the whole year? I can't even plan for next month. Do you want my, do you want my real approach? Yeah. What are we doing here? Mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about business planning. We're mm -hmm. talking about designing a life. We're talking about building the life that you want. It mm -hmm. takes planning. Mm -hmm. We're talking about whether it's present at home, living your unreal life, living your unreal business, living your best health, living your best finances, living your best marriage. Like you have to have a plan for what you're going after. And you might not need to be as detail oriented as I am. That's okay. And if planning an annual basis is like, holy crap, that's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Take it month by month take it quarter by quarter. But what I can tell you is if you don't want to commit to, I'm taking this Friday off six months from now and this Thursday off plan for 20% of your time. And I'm serious. 20% of your time will be chewed up in obligations that either are already planned or come on your, on your plate that you don't expect. Show up. So if you don't want to plan for it, that's okay. Take your annual year and say, I actually have 20% less time than the Jeff Glover mm -hmm. or the people without, you know, kids at home. Mm -hmm. So Got you it. don't have to pick your days, yeah. but just know inherently you're going to have 20% less time. Okay. But I will say mm -hmm. that, yeah, you're going to have to plan to get the most out of this right. to, to win in both areas. So it's like, it's, gonna take it's like taking a small step back to plan and do things that are boring and mundane. So that way you can be set up for the rest of the year. Yeah, for sure. In fact, I don't really see it as a step back because every single time that time wise, time wise, it takes time out of your busy day to plan, right? A lot of times yeah. people say I'm too busy to plan. For sure. I got for so sure. much going on right now. I couldn't think about sitting down for an hour and planning something out. The only rebuttal I have to that is like, unless you know why each activity is in your schedule, you're wasting time. Mm -hmm. Every single thing that's in my schedule and my top producer schedule, it has a purpose. Perfect. So if you don't know yeah. the purpose, you're actually just wasting time. So you need Good. to know what that purpose is. So really quick, before we get into the time black, blocking activity, understanding priorities, planning for them. So like I said, number one, take a look at the calendar that you have with your family, whether it's monthly, quarterly, whatever, go ahead and put those days in. And if you're more uh, planning averse like Jeff, go ahead and plan. You're going to have 20% less days on any given work week, work month to actually work with. Okay. Um, number, well, the second thing I wrote down was plan for things to go wrong. Okay. This was very hard for me, the type a planner to accept the fact that I'm going to have days where either my childcare can't show or, um, what a lot of parents have been experiencing the last couple of years is COVID shutdowns at daycare. Um, we don't know what that's going to look like yet, but there's, um, you know, there's a ton of different rules with childcare on, you know, when your kid can come to school, when they can't. And, and I, I don't even know how you guys have navigated that. So what I also wrote down is plan for sick days and then build in sick days in your calendar as well. So if you're going off of what I wrote down for number one, um, you might add in two sick days a month 
and maybe that's overkill, but keep in mind, you're going to have some months where they have more sick days and less sick days. But if you don't want to commit to the days in number one, and you just put 20%, keep in mind that that will also cover sick days. Um, now on the note of planning sick days in your calendar, if you want to take it a step further, I'd encourage you to actually have a contingency plan for those sick days. So for instance, um, I do have a supportive husband at home. So what that means is we already know depending on the given day of when our child is sick, I know whether I'm off or he knows whether he's off. And we sort of have, have worked a schedule that way. If that doesn't work, we have a contingency plan with grandma. If that doesn't work, we have a contingency plan with, you know, whoever else. So as these, as you plan for these curveballs, while you might not necessarily know how often they're going to happen or when they're going to happen, do the best you can to set up a contingency plan for people who can help out in the event that you have the most important appointment or showing of your life that you can't miss. Okay. Now, number three, once you have those non-negotiable things in there, because remember, if your kid comes home from daycare throwing up, that's non-negotiable. Somebody has got to pick up your kid, right? You then build a daily schedule and daily priorities within that time block. Okay. So again, going back to the example of Jeff Glover, how do I work your morning schedule? Mm -hmm. You don't have to work the Jeff Glover morning schedule. You might have to drop your kids off at daycare by 830. Your day might start at nine, but now we need to solve the problem of how do you get the most out of your nine to three schedule the same way that Jeff gets the same out of his seven to seven schedule, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which is really going to come down to skills and efficiency. So before I get into that, any questions, any thoughts on this? Just about what happens if you don't have family local? What happens if you don't have, uh, you know, you're, you're a transplant and you, you don't have anyone that can help you out? Uh, you know, you don't have the contingency plan or you're a single parent. What is your yeah. response to that? So that's really tough. And one of, uh, one of the clients that really like helped me wrap my head around this. And again, I'm, I'm not a single parent. I do have family around, so I'm not in this exact scenario. Uh, but she's at Cohen. She told me, she's like, you need mom friends. You need friends that are in the same chapter. You need friends that you trust who can pick your kids up from daycare. Mm -hmm. You need friends that you can sort of trade off favors for. Mm -hmm. And you really do. I mean, moms talk about it all the time. You really do need to build your community. Yeah. So, so almost like other single moms that also may have that totally that you can cover them. Absolutely. And, and if you're, if you're a leader in your community and you're not sure where they exist, I, I belong to um, a mom's group. It's called Birmingham Bloomfield moms. Look for, or start a Facebook mom's group in your area. And I'm telling you, I mean, I get some of the best recommendations, the best resources who wants to go for walks, you know, you know, all, all of that stuff. I mean, typically if you're a parent, especially if you're a single parent, which I don't know what that feels like, um, you're used to having to lean on other people. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you can turn that into a lead generation tool. Sure. You can do a deal somewhere in there as well. Um, of course. So you, you really do have to build your, um, your network. I mean, yeah, and that that's, yeah. that's, you know, that's inevitable, whether you're in real estate or somewhere else. I mean, being, being a single parent is super tough. Um, the other thing that we talked about in regards to that is the challenges. If you truly are like single parent, it's all on you. Your schedule is the one that bends. It might mean that you have to actually generate more be more efficient, be more skilled to get yourself in front of more people because there might be good, bad, right, or wrong. There might be more of a fallout for clients that decide that they're not a right fit for you. And that might be hard to hear, um, but that's a reality. Mm -hmm. You might actually have to have yourself set up for more at bats to do the same amount of business because you're going to lose opportunity because of that. Because they don't have the patience, you know, they, they can't sure. wait until the next day or sure. they can't wait until you know, until somebody picks up your, your kid to go meet them at the showing, you know, you, you have to talk about bringing your child to the showing. And of course, some people are going to have a problem with that, right? Sure. Do you have a response yeah. to that? Do you have an opinion on that? On bringing your kid to a showing yeah. or yeah, I mean, if you absolutely have to, what's your, how do you handle hundred percent? It's all expectation setting, mm -hmm. right? Um, in fact, and this is something that really is transferable to real estate, you know, as far as clients go. And, and the reason I'm, I'm sort of pausing when I say that is because I recognize that my daily schedule today as head coach, you know, with my coaching clients is different than a, than a realtor who needs to move to a highest and best situation. Mm -hmm. Yet I do have set appointment times, set call times of clients who have high expectations of me as they should, where I may eventually have to break that. Right. And so when I get into an agreement with somebody, which is my version of a buyer consultation or a listing consultation, I let them know when I'm available. 
I let them know what might come in the way. I let them know the limited circumstances where I'd have to move or cancel a call. Mm -hmm. And I let them know what I would do to make it up to them. And so in a scenario for a real estate agent who is dealing with, um, what I would say is, is, uh, commitments from home that like, they don't know if, if they're going to need to go on a showing at six o'clock at night, I'm prepping the client for that upfront. Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Jones, I am so excited to be on the home search for you. So, you know, I am the only one taking care of little Johnny at home. So what that means is, you know, between the hours of nine and three, you have my undivided attention between the hours of three and six, guess what? We're on Johnny's schedule. So what that means is if we need to see a home between three and six, Johnny's coming with me. I understand if that doesn't work for you, but so, you know, before we get into this relationship, I like all of my clients to know that upfront. Good. So setting the expectations, set the expectation right the for yeah. sure. Okay. Now, when you do that, it, very very rarely is somebody going to be like, that won't work for me, yeah. but you're going to buy yourself out of the scenario of, oh, this looks unprepared, unprofessional. Yeah. yeah. You're telling them up front. If you, if you get me after hours, you get me after hours with my kid. And know that you still may have a few that you end up losing and you don't know why. And in their mind, or when they're telling their friends, she always brought her kid to the closing or he already, always brought his, brought his kid to, to, to our showings, right? Like right. They, they might use it as a reason or one of the reasons why if things don't go their way. Right. You know, they don't get that offer accepted. That's because you were distracted. Right. Like, oh, you you overlooked this, you know, when our inspector caught it. That's because you were chasing yeah. Johnny around the front yard while we were looking at sure. that. So yeah. just know that that's still going to be in the back of some of their minds. It could hurt your conversion a bit. And, and, and going back to your other point, well, that means you might have to generate a few more. To but make this up. actually goes back to your whole detail oriented thing. So, you know, how uh, agents or really clients way back in the day, they would ask you, Jeff, you're 20 years old. Like you don't own a house. Mm -hmm. How the heck can you be presenting to people? And you said, I mastered my scripts. Mm -hmm. I mastered what to say and how to say it. So, so nobody could ask. question Correct. me. That's right. So when you asked me like, Hey, is there a less detail oriented version? Like, yeah, I guess, but yeah. I already know that I'm at a disadvantage of being seen, you know, in, in some eyes, right. As being seen as, Oh, disorganized, you know, Oh, the kids come first. And so the only way you can, well, I don't want to say the only way, but the way that I combat that is being incredibly prepared and proactive. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. so sure, there's always going to be curveballs there, but, um, when you can plan ahead for what you already know, you're going to anticipate, you're going to put people's mind at ease. Most yeah. clients, whether it's real estate client, coaching client, they just want to know that they're taken care of. Yeah. Right. And so as long as you can find a way to proactively communicate that to them by setting the expectations, yep. sure. It might be crazy detail oriented, but when they walk away from that meeting, they're going to be like, all right, she's got her crap together. Yep. That's the feeling that you want them to have. Can right? you tell us what's going on up here? Or you're going to get to that. Um, I'm, I was planning on getting to that, but do you want me to get to that right now? Well, we have 19 minutes. Oh, we have 19 minutes. Okay. Yes. We'll get to that right now. So understanding your priorities and then learning the difference between time management and priority management. There's really, um, one key activity that I, that I focus on in regards to running my day, as well as helping agents run their day as well. So I don't expect you guys to see every single thing that's on the list, but although if you can, you'll see that this is a typical to-do list of a realtor, okay? On any given day, when we tell you to start your day and plan your day, you might have items on here, and I'll share with you. Send addendum, schedule listing photos, lead gen, pick up dry cleaning, order groceries, book doctor's appointments, follow up with Mary, client event plan, business planning. Oh gosh, there's that webinar today. Go on a listing appointment, input a listing. You guys get it, right? So on any given day, when we show up to the office, typically there's a, a small planning period of, I have this huge to-do list that I need to get, I need to get through. Yet we run into a challenge when we have a to-do list this long with this many tasks on it. And we only have four or five or six hours to actually complete that. Okay. So the, the, the other skill that I want to make sure we know is efficiency of getting through things quickly, which, you know, I can get into in just a moment. But what I really want you guys to be doing here is instead of looking at a total to-do list and going down in a linear fashion, or even worse, picking the, the fun things off the list to do and leaving the, the, the not fun things for last, I actually want you guys to learn the skill of taking a to-do list and transferring it over to what we call a priority quadrant. Okay, I'm sure there's like a fancier Glover you name yeah. you can make for it, sure. but I'll, I'll walk you guys through what that looks like. So on any given day, and I told you guys to bring your legal pads, I actually have a legal pad and I draw my day. It's a little bit of an asymmetrical quadrant, so it's not gonna be perfect, but there's a reason for that. 
I actually have four different quadrants of how I organize my day. So the top left quadrant here, this is the urgent and important. This gets done every single day, no matter what. This right here is the non-fun stuff. This is going to be the stuff that you typically don't want to do, yet it's going to be the things that um, have to get done every single day in order for you to move your business forward. Uh, I'm going to go over what I typically fill in there in just a moment. Um, the top right quadrant, at the top here, I wrote non-urgent slash important. You only get to this after this gets done. So on any given day, when I'm looking at my legal pad, this quadrant runs my day. This is the quadrant that I make decisions off of on what else I can fit into my day and when, okay? So the non-urgent important, I save this for tasks like servicing the business that you generated, presenting offers, inspection meeting with Susie, input listing, schedule photos, you know, give feedback to Bob, okay? The bottom left quadrant is my non-urgent, non-important. Now you might be saying, Kate, everything's important. But again, with learning how to prioritize, when I'm deciding what is important and what is not important, this right here directly leads to a paycheck. This right here is planning for, servicing for something that will eventually lead to a paycheck. And this right here, the non-urgent but also important, is servicing a paycheck that I earned over here. Okay, so this has to get done, but it doesn't have to get done at 8 a.m. This has to get done, but it actually doesn't matter whether it's done on a Tuesday or whether it's done on a Thursday. Now, last but not least, again, because we're working parents, there's personal things here, right? When do I call the pediatrician and get that next appointment? When am I going to pick up dry cleaning? What the heck am I making for dinner again tonight? Because, oh my gosh, that's the question I'm so sick of answering, right? <laughs> like, when do I order groceries, right? So there are personal tasks that I do during the day but they fit within this. So let's go back here for a second because this is the most important. So urgent, important. Every single day, what I do is I start my day and I always write the time block that I have in the margin over here. So I, I block my day in um, 30 minute units of time or 15 minute units of time. So a given hour, we'll either have two different units of time or it could have one 30 minute time and two 15 minute units of time, or it could have four 15 minute units of time. So depending on what unit of time you're using for your appointment or your tasks, for, for sake of simplicity, I broke it down into 30 minute units. And, I was, that, and by the way, the units, is that for efficiency? Because 100%. so many people say, I've got an hour and they just take Correct. the whole hour to do it, right? Correct. There's, Correct. there's, um, there's, there's studies done and I, I forgot the, the study. It's a big yeah, it's one. Time fills the space. Yeah. Yeah. Something you, like that. yeah. Correct. You can take a, there was two side-by-sides. Yeah. Give two teams. One team has one hour. One team has 15 minutes. The team that was given an hour took an hour. The team that was given 15 Correct. minutes took 15 minutes. So you look at each hour's quadrants. You can actually have four things happen per hour. So in a perfect world, you have really four units of time in an hour mm -hmm. and you're assigning tasks from here in each quadrant, right? But for the sake of talking to an agent who's responsible for lead gen, lead follow-up, I actually wrote them down in 30 minute blocks because as Jeff has said, and as I still agree, even as a working parent, the most important things you're going to be doing every single day is what I underlined in orange. And if you go back here, I underlined it in orange. So isn't it funny? There's a list of like 20 things here. How many of them are actually underlined in orange? One, two, three, four. Four things on this list are going to be moving your business forward directly. There's other things on this list that are important and there's other things on this list that need to get done. But there are four things that if I don't do them in 30 to 60 days, I'm going to have a paycheck issue. So number one, I go back over here and those four things are always serviced before noon, okay? So we have an arrival time, which is 8 a.m., arrival slash acknowledgements. I know Jeff has gone through this before, but we start the day early and it's, hey, got your message. I'm in meetings till 12. I'll get back to you after lunch. Hey, Kate, got your showing request. I'll have my assistant work on that or I'll get back to you after 12. I am letting them know I got their message, got their email, got their call, and I'm giving them a time on when I'm going to be getting back to them. And that's the difference between a response, right? Not everything not needs a response, no, no. correct. Because guess what? Can you when, talk about when that? This, when this says, hey, Kate, I want to schedule three showings for tomorrow, I put that over here. Yeah. I'm going to put that over here, okay? I'm still going to get to this, but I'm not getting to this until after this time. Because if you start working on the showings, everything else is going to get put off. Right, versus correct. Versus just acknowledging it and working on it later. 
Correct. So next, and, and we're not going to have time to go over exactly this today, and obviously all of these webinars, most of them are skill focused. Um, I do some sort of skill work. And you might be saying, well, Kate, I don't lead generate, I don't prospect, or you know, I, I do just business with my sphere. Fine. What about your pricing presentation? Fine. What about your value prop presentation? There is skill work somewhere. And if you're wondering where you need that skill work, what I what I want to ask you to do is go back over the last 60 days, ask yourself where you lost an appointment or where you lost a client, and what skill could you have learned or used that would have prevented that. Was it pricing? Was it negotiation? There is a skill that you need to learn. Now, why is this important for working parents? Because how good you are at your job in a given time is going to increase your efficiency, meaning your conversion rate needs to be higher because you have less time to get things done. Next, I wrote down a typical schedule, lead gen between 9 and 11. Um, again, there could be flexibility there. It could be 9 to 1030. It could be 9 to 10. It could be 9 to 11.30, right? Um, but typically my rule for clients is unless you're going on one appointment every single day, there's no reason why you shouldn't be getting at minimum 25 new new contacts every single day. And so that will typically happen in here, right? Kate, now, I want to add. So we just had, sorry, I know I'm out of the frame here. We just had um, one of our agents make 100 contacts on Friday. Oh yeah, I saw that. And I asked him, I said, so tell us, tell the group, you know, some observations and things that you had. He averaged 10 contacts per hour. And I'm like, that, I'm so relieved to hear that because yeah. so many agents are telling us, oh, you know, things are different now. And it says spam when we call. And so less people are answering or less people just answer their phones these days. He averaged 10 contacts per hour. And we've been hearing so many agents say, oh, it's more like six or seven. And yeah, some hours, sure. But the fact that he averaged 10 contacts per hour, it like made my heart flutter. Anyways, continue. I'm so happy that's what gets you going. <laughs> Here's the thing, guys, your your efficiency or lack thereof is not an excuse. It's your problem to solve. So if you're only getting six contacts an hour, guess what? It looks like you're prospecting three hours a day, not two. Bingo. So you, that's not an excuse to get less contacts. It's it's how do you want to increase your efficiency, right? So there are ways to increase your efficiency with this. Uh, Justin Ford talks about it on Prospecting Bootcamp. Shameless plug for that. So there are going to be ways to get your, your contacts in in a short amount of time. Next here, uh, 11 a.m., lead follow-up. So this is interesting. Why would lead follow-up come after lead generation? Because lead follow-up can wait. And it, can, it can't wait forever. But they've already given you permission to follow up at a different date, which means you've already built credibility with them somewhere. Lead generation, you're asking for the opportunity to follow up with them later. So you're looking for new opportunities from 9 to 11, and then from 11.30 to 12 or 11 to 11.30, whatever you want to call it, you're working on getting a commitment from those appointments, from those leads that you've already generated, okay? So 11.30 a.m., appointment, meeting prep. So here's where um, I'm actually planning my afternoon, okay? Do I have a listing appointment that I need to go on? Do I have showings that I need to set up? Do I have um, meeting prep? This is important, guys. You might be saying, hey, Kate, I just got an inspection report. I got to go over it with Susie. That's a meeting. It doesn't matter that it's a phone call. That's a meeting. So you're going to schedule one of those appointments in your afternoon appointment slot. Hey, Susie, I can talk about the inspection at one or three. What works better for you? Mm -hmm. You have a low appraisal come in on a listing. Why the heck are we doing that at 9 a.m.? Hey, Bob and Mary, we got the appraisal results in. I'm going to have some strategies for you today. When do you have time to go over it? Two or four this afternoon. Yep. Nothing's going to change between 9 a.m. and two on what goes on with that appraisal. And not only that, but you don't have, even if they say, well, let's just say in that scenario, well, what did it come in at? you don't have to respond to that, right? right? That you just said that you're going to be in touch with them between one and four, that you could be, you know, in a closing, you could be on a listing appointment. Um, you know, you, you don't have to respond every time they send you a message. Right. A hundred percent. And so that's sort of part of controlling the expectations, controlling the emotion that come with it. You know, I have a lot of clients who have a hard time uh, managing their time because really they have a hard time managing their expectations and the expectations of a client. If I don't answer right now, they're going to be ticked off at me. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Well, what are you communicating to them to get yourself out of that? Yeah. You've trained right? them to do that. You've, you've trained them to do that. Yeah. And, and second of all, one of the things that I talk about is for your high needs clients, for the ones that you know are going to be blowing up your phone at nine 30, what would happen if you reached out to them at eight 30? Hey, Bob, can't wait to touch base this afternoon in meetings till 12 you know, go ahead and yep. send me an email text. I'll get to them after. Yep. What would happen if you proactively anticipated that and had a solution up front? That's great customer service. 
Okay, great. So um, next I have appointment prep, meeting prep. Now guys, again, what I want to say here is the is schedule your phone calls. Okay. Now, one of the points that I wrote down in efficiency is I never answer my phone blind. My phone could go off. I'll look to see who it is. I'll respond to say, Hey, in a meeting right now, what's up? When can I schedule time to talk? I might know who it is and what it's about, but typically, you know, a phone call coming in could be a 10 minute check-in. It could yeah. be a 20 minute appointment. That is an appointment. Anytime your phone rings, you get a notification, you get a text message. It is a request for your time. It is a request to pull you off of what you're doing. So it's our job to seek what, what is the challenge? What is the issue that they're looking for? Did we lose it? We're on audio still. So well, I'll just, I'll keep, just talking. keep talking. Until they what back. solution are we, are we looking to solve there? And when in the afternoon, can you schedule that phone call? Here's the thing, guys, if it's not in our lead generation, lead follow-up, and it's not a 911, the seller's walking away from a deal right now, it's something that's going to pull you off your schedule. Okay. So while they're working on bringing us back, hopefully you can still hear us. Um, the one thing I heard in what you said there, Kate, is um, callbacks, right? You, you can, you, you, just because you're missing a call, I hear what a lot of agents say, they'll say, yeah, but I'm, I'm missing lead. I'm, that could be a lead, right? When you're prospecting in the morning, you're going to get some callbacks. You have a scheduled time. This is always, this is always my routine right before I leave for lunch. I go through all my missed calls. Sometimes they answer, sometimes they don't, but I'm always making a point to go through all of my missed calls because not everyone leaves voicemails and there's some leads in there. Right. Right. And, and there's, there's just going to be a level of you guys, we're going to have to pick, you know, which one is going to be um, most likely guaranteed for a paycheck 30 to 60 days from now. Do I need to answer that call from the co-op agent at 10 o'clock in the morning or do, or do I need to be going through my lead follow-up? And they, mo they both might be important, but this is where the skill of time management and then time management prioritization really comes in. Both are important. Both need to get done, but both don't have the same end result. And it's our job to be looking at our calendar and looking at our schedule to say, which one is directly related to me staying on track with my production or which one is just something I need to do to service the business that I have. Okay. So you guys will see in the afternoon, I really reserve this for, and, and you can see it's, it's not in any fancy order because Hey, in our, in our world, it's own the morning, win the day. I don't really care what your afternoon looks like. I understand that you're going to have, you know, a, a variety of things that come on your schedule in the afternoon. That's okay. So long as you're working a tight morning schedule and you're servicing future business, you're earning future business, this afternoon can look the way that it's going to look. Mm -hmm. But for an example, I am plugging in the non-urgent important tasks into my afternoon. Scheduled calls, meetings, title, lender requests, on the business tasks or personal, right? Do I have 15 minutes to place an Instacart order? Do I have 10 minutes to call the pediatrician? But I'm only doing that after all of these things are done, okay? So you'll see present offer, inspection meeting with, with uh, Susie, input listings, schedule photos, all of that can go in your afternoon. Now back to the whole quadrants of time, can you input a listing in 15 minutes or do you need a full hour, right? So this is where you start playing with your efficiency of, oh my gosh, I only have six quadrants of time, but I have eight tasks. How good can you get on making them fit in a given task? Okay, so I wanna jump down here for a second because these exist in our business and that is non-urgent, non-important. You're not gonna like what I wrote down for non-important, but I mean non-important in the context of you getting a paycheck in 90 days, I wrote down uh, future plans on the business, attend to closing. Um, oh, I thought I wrote down business plan. I'm glad I didn't. Oh. But, I, <laughs> but I wrote down like client event plan. Here's the thing. These are important things that your coach is going to ask of you. Hey, did you finish the second half of the year business plan? Hey, what is your database plan? This is important, but it only happens after we get through this and after we get through this. So what better incentive to get through this in a timely manner than knowing that we have these non-urgent, non-important tasks? Now, here's how I do it. I have a project day, okay? So Thursday afternoons from 12 to 4, any big projects that take more than a 15 or 30 minute unit of time, because let's be honest, there's going to be those tasks. I have one day of the week that I schedule those for, mm -hmm. okay? So if, if it's going to take me more than the traditional daily unit of time, I schedule it in an afternoon that I don't have to be 
super time blocked. So would that be like a slower afternoon? You just know like, hey, Thursday afternoon is my time before, you know, I still have a buffer of a day before the weekend. It's my time to get caught up on all of that before I get busy again for the weekend. Yes. And, I mean, I don't know what, how Thursday, I typically, but... Well, it is Thursday for me. And how I typically do that is there's no consequence if it's on a Tuesday or Thursday, meaning nothing is being held back by me putting it on a, a Thursday, mm -hmm. right? So actually, you know, this Thursday, we're recording stuff for the coaches. I'm doing coach development programs on a Thursday afternoon. Got it. It doesn't matter whether that's a Tuesday or Thursday. So I use that in what I would consider my least efficient time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got and then last but not least, guys, of course, we have our personal quadrant. This is, this is the responsibilities that as a parent, they're just going to be on your plate no matter what. They're going to have dry cleaning, doctor's appointment, order groceries. Now, in a perfect world, if you have the help, if you have the leverage, this is either what you're leveraging out to either hired help you have, if that's an option for you, or this is stuff that you're, you're fitting in in small windows of time or outside of this time block. But what I want to really drive home here, guys, is it doesn't matter whether your day starts at nine to three, 10 to two, it doesn't actually matter. There's only four or five things that are not negotiable for moving your business forward. And then everything else, it, and then everything else you can plug in and, and make fit within a given time block. Love so it. I know I, I really could have talked about this for a lot longer, yeah. but any thoughts or questions you have that you think I'm missing? in no, regards to what would be important. I, I think it makes sense. I think we hit on, you know, the, the important things that, you know, somebody with kids would go through and, you know, essentially it's not always going to look the same. The only thing that I would also add, and I do want your opinion on this, you know, when I talk about own the morning, win the day, one of the things I do comment on when, when people will come up on break and say, Jeff, you know, I got little ones at home. I can't do that. My, my response is, well, then you have to have consistency with your days, meaning your Mondays look the same. Mm -hmm. Your Tuesdays look the same. Meaning yeah. Each Tuesday looks the same. Each sure. Monday looks the same. Sure. Each Wednesday looks the same. Is that, is that how you would, that's how I do it. That'd be a yeah. good, so I yes. like, for me, so it doesn't have to be, you know, not Monday every Friday day morning. Needs to look the same. Exactly. But like for me, but every Monday looks the same. Every Tuesday. For, looks the same. And what that might mean is you might be front loading your week. So mm -hmm. for me, I have a heavy coaching day on Monday. Mm -hmm. If you're an agent and you know that you have Mondays, no matter what, and your spouse is on sick day duty, you might be prospecting six hours on a Monday and then not on a Thursday or a Friday. Got it. So you might front load your day or your week differently, uh, depending on what your priorities are. But for then sure. it looks the same every Monday, which I love the idea of front loading, especially. Right. I front load all my, here's the thing, guys, especially as a, a working parent, the chances that things are going to come in the way, the later the week goes on is just increasingly higher. So yeah. when it comes to efficiency, you have to ask yourself, where am I my best? Where do I have my most energy? And where can I get the most bang for my buck? And that for me is on a Monday. So I, I'm always going to work my heaviest loads Mondays and Tuesdays. Awesome question. Um, and you can grab a seat. Oh, okay. if, um, if, if somebody wanted uh, a lot of the, the checklists and the systems oh, yes. and, you know, kind of the operations behind this, what's your, what's your, you know, recommendation to them? Or, yeah. you know, I know that obviously you're busy developing our coaches, you're busy with your family, you're busy working with the handful of higher, you know, caliber clients that you have. What would you say to either salesperson that's on today, which it's mostly salespeople watching yeah, and also yeah. some executive assistants and some operations right. people that are on today. How do you develop a, a system in a lot of what you just talked about? So there's really, there's really one word I keep coming back to and it's efficiency. Well, two really efficiency first skills second. Um, and the reason I put them in that order is because you can have high skills, mm -hmm. but if you don't master fitting the time and fitting your goals, fitting your appointments, fitting your tasks within a given time period. And you also don't learn the skill of, Hey, there's five tasks here. Do I prospect for a listing or do I send a birthday card? If you can't look at that list and determine what's more important for your business, you're never going to grow a big business, regardless of how much time you have or don't have. So, um, the program I really come back to is operations mastery. Now, um, you might be thinking, Kate, I'm not an operations person. I'm not an admin, but guess what? Unless you have a full-time admin, yes, you are. And before you hire a full-time admin or full-time operation, um, you know, you have to know those things to, to teach to the, to the actual admin that you're hiring. So, um, operations mastery, if you guys go ahead in the packet, 
fast forward to page, page 15. 15. Page 15, yep. Page 15, operations mastery. We're going to be starting that August 2022. So Taylor Kerrigan, Taylor Cornfield, they are the operations back backbone of not just Jeff Glover and Associates, but uh, Glover U as well. In fact, some of the problems that Taylor Kerrigan often solves are how do we do this better? How do we do this more efficient? If we're going to repeat this task again, how do we automate this so that it never happens again? Mm -hmm. And so that's that's part of the way that we've been able to grow and scale, not just Jeff Glover and Associates, but Glover U so quickly is the, the efficiency behind a lot of the operations, which Taylor, of course, is going to get into in this program. So I think what's interesting about the reason why we picked this particular program, because you may be noticing a theme by now when we're putting on, you know, these webinars, we usually have some type of coaching program that's in alignment with the conversation. And this is very much in alignment with the conversation. And of course, you shared from a very tactical standpoint today, the strategies of what to do when you're a working mom or a working parent. But also, it, the easy button, which is not easy because there's work behind it, it is hire help, right? Yeah, so sure, sure. This is for those that are at the point where they're ready to hire their first assistant, for those where they're at the point to you know, have a listing manager, or maybe they already have a listing manager, and now they really truly need an executive assistant. That's essentially where, where you know a, a large group of people that are watching this or that will be listening to this on the podcast later, they're at. They're like, Kate, I get it. I, I I need help with my executive assistant, or I need I need to leverage. I need to add another piece, and that's why we added this to the packet. Again, we're on page fifteen in your workbook because. This is what's next for a working parent, for it, a working dad, for a working mom. So it is. And and I, I want to also add the caveat that you might not be in a position where you're ready to hire that person. Mm -hmm. You still need to know how to do all these things efficiently. Uh, okay. And doing these things uh, really well is actually a lead generation tool for you. So, you know, what we'll put on here or what I just circled was creating and implementing a five-star client review program. If you create and implement a five-star review program, don't you think that's going to become a passive lead gen source for you? Mm -hmm. If you give your clients proactive customer service, meaning, you know, Taylor teaches us in this program, what can we do so the client never calls us first? Don't you think your day will be more efficient if you can solve the problems before the problems? And the, the obvious answer is yes. So of course, this is for an admin or an assistant, but quite honestly, as a salesperson, there are skills in here that you need to learn before you can ever teach them to somebody else. I'm glad you pointed that out because I asked Taylor and Taylor, hey, what percentage of your audience is executive assistants and what percentage of your, are, of your audience is agents? And it's like 50-50. And you, uh, you yeah. hit the nail on the head when you said, you need to be able to master it yourself in order to teach somebody. Of course, we'd love if you want to continue hiring us over and over again, but if you learn it once, right. you'll never have to hire us again because then you yeah. can go teach somebody that. So in, in back to like my client load, my schedule really quick, and then I know we have to wrap up. I mean, I have my my top tier clients asking me questions that I that I, I lovingly tell them, gosh, you really need to join Ops Mastery. It's not just for your admin. Like you have to know how to run a client event. Yeah. You have to know what the goal is of putting 150 person event together. Yep. Because this, again, it comes back to if you're going to spend time putting a client event together, if you're going to spend the time working for a client, answer the question of how can I get the most from this one interaction, which again, comes down to efficiency. When people ask, all right, I need to put together a policy and procedures manual of everything we need to do to manage the business. That's what this program does. It puts people in a position to create and develop their own policy and procedures manual. Yeah, it does. But really, I still go back to Jeff. I mean, if you're doing all these things right, it is a passive lead gen tool. Right. You will get more referrals. Customer you will get more business without tool. having to be at the office every day from nine to 11. That's not your free pass here. But what I'm saying is mastering the operations of the business in and of itself is a lead gen tool. It, it took me a long time to realize that customer service is a lead generation tool. hundred percent. Right. I, I thought it was just kind of like something you're supposed to do. You're supposed to give good service. You want them to say good things about you but there's actually things you can do to turn it in from just a good customer experience to a good customer experience that leads to more listing opportunities. Correct. And correct. we cover all of that in the program. So if they want more information, you can text the word operations to 55444, that same number that you texted for the morning message. Again, text the word operations to 55444 for more information on that. And last but not least, before we leave, Kate, everyone on this webinar or anyone that's listening to this later, is going to have an opportunity to see you uh, one last time before you're on maternity leave again in, in 12 calendar months. Uh, so Kate, 
talk to us about efficiency. <laughs> what can I say? Get efficiency. It, it, like... <laughs> that's why I asked the question about the season of your life. We're going to get yeah. it all in in 24 months. Listen, you know what Matt Sutter said to me? What's that? Would you rather run through fire or walk? And he said, I'm sprinting through fire. Let's do this again. <laughs> all right, good. So page uh, 18 in your workbook. The last thing I want to share with you before we leave you today will be your opportunity to see Kate and I and all of our coaches and all of our great speakers, which we got everyone finalized. And those are going to be on the website in the coming days. But if you want to join us for three and a half days of a listing focused event, I don't care what role you're in, whether you're in operations, whether you're in marketing, whether you're list the listing agent or you're leading a team or leading a brokerage, come see us up in Traverse City. Ever been in Traverse City, Kate? Yep, just last weekend. Just last weekend, 78 and sunny in August. So for our people that are like down in the South, this is your way to, to get out of the heat and yes. come spend some time with us. So Absolutely. we're spending three and a half days together. We have breakout sessions, which you'll be leading a few. Yep. Uh, we have masterminds. We have one-on-one -on -one interviews. You can see it right there on your screen there. Um, top agent panels. Obviously, I'm sharing everything we're doing right now to average between 60 and 80 listings per month. And what's really cool, and we haven't done this since 2019, is I'll be doing a live listing presentation from the stage. So it's been updated since 2019. So we felt we were it, it was time to do that. Also with what's happening in the market, the conversations that we're having at the listing table, I just had a conversation with a seller last night and there's several things that I'm saying today that I didn't say three months ago. And so you'll hear that in the live listing presentation, as well as we'll do the stump the Trump activity, which is real fun. Were you gonna say something? I was, I was gonna say, there's actually the most important part of this event that's actually not listed anywhere on the itinerary. And I just wanna make sure we get to it. And that is the relationships that you'll build. So yeah. before this today, I actually just got off a coaching call with some of our top clients, Ralph and Holly Pearson. Yeah. Um, they are they, 50, use, 50 units closed so far, halfway through the year. Year to date, 50 units out of Nashville, right? 50 units out of Nashville. Nashville and their leading source, their leading source of business is agent to agent referrals. Wow. Agent to agent referrals. And, and while I, I don't know the exact percentage that has come from our event, what I do know is his family and Jess Spencer, they are down on vacation together yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, they've built an amazing referral network and they're not the only ones, by the way, um, within Glover U. And so while the, the general admission price is 449 VIP upgrade is 299. What I really want to ask, what I really want you to ask yourself is what can you gain if you really lean into to these relationships that you build mm -hmm. at these events, because that truly is the, the yep. real value of these. And we're giving everyone a hundred bucks off today. So if you use S S oh, wow. Kate, yep. S S Kate. So Kate, What's the S -S stand for? Uh, you know, I just had to ask Alana, our marketing director, <laughs> sizzling summer, sizzling summer. These are sizzling summer webinars. Okay. That's what the S S stands for. Okay. I was going to name my vote after you, if that's okay, we're going to go S S Kate. That'd be great. But you're giving everyone a hundred bucks off and that's coming out of your pocket. I hear all Fantastic. Also. Fantastic. <laughs> so go ahead and check out loveryou.com forward slash retreat and to the person that's wondering like what do you guys do with these events what's it like we asked our marketing team our video crew to put together a 60 second video to show you what we're going to be doing this summer in traverse city let's take a look what started as an event exclusively for our team has since been open to the public why would i do this the answer is simple my passion for training and coaching others to accomplish what we've accomplished has exceeded all other passions in my life i absolutely love everything that they stand on everything that they represent um jeff and his team do everything in excellence i've been to many conferences throughout my 12-year career and this is one of the best i've ever attended i'm in this room and I'm wondering, all right, why should I pay attention to what this guy has to say? Or why should I pay attention to what's going on here on the stage? And that's for one reason and one reason only, because I'm on the ground with you. Not only are they coaching it, but these guys are doing it. Top amazing agents around the United States come together and can learn from some of the best people that Jeff has on stage. If we can put on an unreal experience, meaning an experience so amazing it's almost unbelievable, well then people will continue to come back. So therefore, we can pour into them to live their most unreal lives. You're gonna know exactly what you need to do or you're already going to have acquired the skills necessary to make 2022 your best year ever. There's a reason why we're the fastest growing training and coaching company on the planet. It's all about not reinventing the wheel. It's finding those certain things that work with your process and being true to yourself and putting those into play and helping as many clients as you want. And Glover U gets me back on track with that. I loved the featured speakers that they brought on. The content was so 
incredibly relevant to what we're dealing with today as real estate professionals. And I recommend to anybody, if you're looking to get into an organization, a coaching program that uh, really touches on what is going to get you to the next level with what you're competing with today, uh, then this is definitely where you need to be. Kate, it's been fun talking time management and being productive with you. I'm looking forward to, to continuing the journey. And of course, we've got some months left before you go back on maternity leave again. So let's be as productive as possible. Let's help as many people live their most unreal life. Sounds and good. let's make it a great rest of the week. We'll Thanks, see you guys. Bye, guys.